All right, good afternoon, guys, to those of you on the East Coast. Good afternoon to those of you on the West Coast. I'm your host, Brandon Troy, host and co-creator of Movers and Shakers Unlimited. And as I mentioned to you before, uh, for uh, the doubleheader that we have today, we have uh, some of the minds as well as the star of the uh, Australian horror um, uh, feature known as AI. Um, so without further ado, I want to introduce uh, the star of the film, uh, Kabir Singh. Let me bring him on. Kabir, what's going on, man? How you doing? Hey, man. What's up? 7.30 in the morning. I'm talking to you. That's what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so first and foremost, you know, thanks for taking the time to uh, um, talk about this film. Uh, I guess I'll start first of, you know, talking about how your involvement started with it. How, how my what started? Sorry? My no, your, invol your involvement, yeah. Involvement. Oh man, like that is uh, that's a that's a story in its own. I was living in Mumbai at the time, and um, uh, I had finished a film just prior to it. And the makeup artist kind of passed the casting on to me, and she's like, "Hey, you should do this." And um, so I just applied and um, got a call from Alan, the director, and he literally spoke to me the phone for like three hours um and three hours he literally like ran down the like he narrated the whole film to me like this is the character this is the film this is this this is this and um you know i really like your work and you want to be in it um and i'm like send me the script i can't see you hey man are you there you are no yes i am go ahead <laughs> okay you are sorry <laughs> i was like he disappeared Anyway, so Alan was just like, uh, you, uh, I was like, send me the script and I'll, I'll read it and then I'll let you know. Um, and then he sent me the script and the first draft wasn't like amazing. And I was like, oh, you know, it's nice. It's got its moments, but, you know, it's not, you know, there yet. But he's like, you know, it's the first draft. It's going to get there. It's going to be several drafts after this. And, you know, throughout the year, they were developing the script and he kept, kept in contact with me, kept calling me and saying, oh, well, we've done this and we've got this location and that. And eventually after a year, you know, I wasn't really sure this project was happening because you know how this industry is, like things kind of get lit, green lit, and then they just- Changes all the time. So I was, sure. All the time. So I was, I was just like, yeah, like, you know, we'll see when it happens, when it happens, it happens. That's all, that's all I, you know, thought of it. But, you know, a year, Alan kept me in the loop, you know, the script kept changing. And eventually the script came to a point where it was like quite good. It was, you know, it was becoming to be a bit, you know, tighten it. And, um, and then Alan was like, yeah, do you, I mean, yeah, like, I've been speaking to you. Are you still interested? I said, hundred percent of the script has come along and that was it. Like, you know, he, uh, you know, booked my tickets. I flew back from India to, uh, Australia and, uh, started preparing. Um, yeah. And that's how I started. It was just a random, Add on Facebook. <laughs> so make a body passing it on to me. So gotcha, gotcha. And uh, uh, speaking further about that, just in, in speaking with that idea of uh, morality, that I feel it has been is kind of like underneath the surface of obviously the the horror, the horror exterior. Can you speak uh, speak to that? Um, the morality. Uh, See the as in you, you're talking about the the character that I play, which is kind of well, yeah. Um, see, I think I think the script was uh, initially, you know, the idea that Alan had was like you know very horror, but you know, eventually the script started being kind of like a a, a story about a kid, you know, who's a who's a uh, an, an immigrant and you know and and it started becoming about an immigrant's sort of struggles in, in a country like australia in a country away from home uh for this immigrant and you know the struggles and the uh and the and the trials and tribulations that this person faces uh, and eventually gets himself into a situation where you know this happens to him and you know alan had initially when he had explained the script to me, he had told me the story of his of his friend and that this was a true story. And this happened to a friend of his uh, when he was back home. And 
and obviously it was you know it's inspired from true events uh, as you would know so i mean that was horrifying to even just like listen like you know hear to uh, that you know this actually happened and but the morality in the whole story was he kind of brought it into an australian mm -hmm. context um where it will be more relatable to i guess people who immigrate and Im people immigrate from you know countries to other countries you know every single day not now but you know <laughs> definitely definitely and uh i mean i don't want to go into spoilers obviously of you know what what transpires uh within the film but um in keeping in mind what's uh what's at play and uh what we have was there as you said, it went the the story went through uh, a number of drafts. So, was there any uh, any thought in having it go a certain way by by the end, or was that something that was constantly played with on how how it would conclude, or was it always, you know, the the conclusion that we receive in the film? Um. I'm trying to dance around it without, you know, spoiling it for those no, out no, here. No, I, I get you. And I'm trying to like really think <laughs> <laughs> of a clever answer here. Um, see, I think, I, see, I remember the, the scripts going through several drafts and it, the ending was always the hardest and it's always the hardest thing to kind of achieve because you're like, well, how are you going to really lead the audience? That's really what matters because when you when the audience leaves you, they talk either they talk about the film or they don't. Um, so the ending needs to like hit uh, in a way. So yeah, it was the the ending kept changing throughout the drafts, and eventually it came to a point. And you know, you know, it's funny. Like even after we started filming, the the script kind of kept changing. You know, with you know, there was the structure there because you need that structure to be able to, you know, film and slate and do all those things, but, um, and storyboard, but the ending, um, it kind of changed according to the location because we faced problem the location at times. Um, and uh, it changed with the location. So it was supposed to be maybe a little bit more dramatic uh or a little bit more um you know it the, and, and you know and once the film even gets into the editing room then the film changes again you know the film from the script to the after the edit after it goes to the editing room is a completely different film to what it was to realize what it is now but i feel like that always happens the editor kind of has the the final control over over you know what becomes of the film for sure for sure um so with, with that being said uh can you also how i was speaking with um uh, kanesh just a moment ago as well as uh, john and you know them talking about you know what was at play with this uh you know, with this film and, and uh, you know, the response that it's been getting, can you talk also a little bit about that and, and kind of enjoying, you know, people going along that journey of those that have had a had opportunity to see it thus far? Because it, it is quite a, quite a journey, so. <laughs> Sorry, what was the thing you said? I was saying, because it is quite a journey. So, you know, it's always fun if you already know what the end game is and, and to kind of vicariously live through that with the audience that's uh, seeing it for the first time. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, like the, like I was, I was actually quite privileged, I feel like, to be able to tell that story because I personally, for one, have experienced that, but not to the extent of how Kieran experiences it. Um, but I have cousins and friends and, you know, who have lived life that, that the character lived, you know, like working from, you know, restaurant to restaurant and trying to just find a job, trying to pay his bills, the universe, you know, trying to pay his student loans. I mean, like, that's a very relatable story for not just Australians, but for, for people around the world, you know? You know, especially uh, when you come from a kind of a third world country, 
that and you don't come with a lot of money and you know you have to really survive to make ends meet um so i i feel like already it's a very relatable character to a lot of people in a relatable story and um you know in the in the in 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 the prep work of this film for me that was one of the hardest things i've ever done and i you know i kind of went all you know matthew mcconaughey uh, sorry matthew mcconaughey um, christian bale um in the machinist on this you know it was just like that that's literally the first thing i looked at. i'm like what did christian bale do to look like what he did in the machinist and it was um coffee cigarettes apples and running 10 miles a day that's all he did for like i think two months and that's kind of what I put my, put my body through, you know, like, uh, I started off weighing about 86 kilos, ended up in about eight, 66 kilos. So I lost about 20 kilos of the film. And I had told Alan that I'm like, listen, like I'm going to lose weight and we have to shoot this film backwards. Kind of like we have to shoot all the, all the horror elements first and you know and then you gotta give me some time to like put some weight back on and you know look a bit healthier and you know makeup does its job as well and um and and then and then shoot the sh shoot the story of the immigrant towards the end of the film cycle um and that was really really difficult because going into the horror element in the beginning like i was very dedicated uh in terms of you know i on set, I wouldn't, you know, people would be eating and I'd just be locked in a room, like, you know, and I could smell. And the only thing I would get in the morning was like, just get me a fruit juice in the morning so I can survive the 12 to 16 hours on set. And that's it. That's all I would eat. I would not eat anything. Um, and then I would go home and then have like an apple or a tuna or something. Um, but it was, it was a very inclusive set, you know, because I opted to live on in the house that my character lives in and i wanted to sleep in the bed that my character sleeps in you know i wanted to be very familiar with the environments and you know we held all of the rehearsals prior to filming there um just so like you know to be fully immersed you know that i need to be adopting you know the lifestyle that you know this immigrant um kieran uh is going through you know he's going through so many struggles he can't pay his university bills um uh, and hence he ends up taking this job where all this stuff happens to him so yeah i don't know if i answered that properly <laughs> you did you did you definitely did um well with that being said uh, uh kabir um i want to you know thank you so much for coming on and talking about uh, this film um as i said it is quite a journey uh before i let you go can you tell folks to where they can find you? Oh, where they can find me, uh, like on social yeah. media. Uh, so you can find me or the other film. Find me. Uh, you can find me on IMDb. You can find me on my Facebook, which is Kabir Singh. That's my name. And you can find me on Instagram, which is I am Kabir Singh. So, yeah, so modest. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Sounds good. Well, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Be safe out there and I'll see you soon. Bye. Pleasure speaking to you. Thanks, man.